Welcome to another edition of Vice Break. I'm your host, Brenda Whitted, and very, very excited uh, to start our, our one of our smaller sub-series about Hall of Fame. This is a Hall of Fame induction on September 30th. And I have I'm I'm actually honored to be with a two-time, that's two-time dose uh, uh, Hall of Fame inductee, Deborah Murphy. Thank you so much. I'm I'm very, very excited to speak with you. Thank you, Warren, for inviting me. I appreciate y'all thinking about me. Oh, I, I, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to think about. Like I, I'm like as I was getting a chance to know a little bit more about you. I think that's one of the coolest things about being the host of Bison and Break. I get to know about people as in a love that I didn't even know about, and the and the greatness that you know. Find out even more. You know, we we find out about all the great alumni and stuff. But there's so much more once you dig a little bit deeper and find you know those are the same steps that we were walking and stuff like that. So it fills me with pride. So that's a that's a fun thing that I get to do uh, selfishly as a host. Sounds good. All right, but before that, this is Bison Break. So we like to, you know, we like to pull down the curtain a little bit and get to know you outside the athlete. And just some, you know, just some questions, some, some like, so first question, mm -hmm. your first car, what did you name it? I don't name cars. You don't name cars? Oh, man. No. Oh man, I, I I still miss Alicia from high school right now. That was my that was my uh that, that the, the old act legend, bro. That was that was that was it. That was that was that was definitely it growing up. I, I still miss that car. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Question number two. Okay. What fashion trend would you like to see make a, make a comeback? Hmm. It seemed like everything is coming back because yes. I definitely the bush. Mm -hmm. Definitely seen that quite a bit. Platforms. Bell true. bottoms. So <laughs> true. Everything has been coming back. <laughs> it's all very, very sick of there. Like it's it's funny to go back and look at some older mm -hmm. photos. You're like, you could well step out in that right now and be fresh. Exactly. That is very, very true. Okay, all right. Final question. If I had to put you on the spot, I'm not gonna ask you to, but if I had to put you on the spot no. and you were either gonna rap or sing a song word for word, not one miss, what would that song be? You said a song. Mm -hmm. Ah, I don't listen to music that often, so. Okay, okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, now I, I just know, I like, I think about sometimes I'll just got, kind of be walking around. Yeah. Start, there'll just be some lyrics going on in the head, just uh -huh. pretty much anything uh, off of Jeezy, off the Recession album. Uh, they're just, you know, they're just some some albums that kind of have, have stuck with me a little bit, but you know, you 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 were busy getting it in, like, and so we can we can we can we can roll right into it off of that. You were you were a great not just great track star, mm -hmm. but you were a great athlete in high school. No doubt. You did volleyball and you did basketball. How did you did you always know you wanted to end up ultimately in, in track, or or was this like a was a tough decision for you? That was a tough decision because from high school, you're right. I went from volleyball to basketball to track. I did a little bit of flag football and rec. However, by the time my senior year came, the coaches convinced me that track would be a better sport for a scholarship. That's right. So I gave up basketball and I did indoor track, outdoor track. Was that was track your favorite? Well, like if 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 the coaches hadn't jumped in, what was your favorite? I would say basketball. And then volleyball. So wait, so, track, track was third. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay though. I mean, look, look, they 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 made the, your coaches, your coaches were looking out. They made they made a quality yeah. decision. That yeah. is absolutely true. Um yeah. so you ran, I, I never got into this in, in the introduction, but you ran the 400. So okay. wait, I'm sorry, am I wrong? But I know you did the four by four hundred relay, but I was like, am, am I, tell, tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I maybe I'm I'm just it's okay. We started from the 60 yard dash. Okay. 100, 200, 400. So, so everything when it comes to a sprint, I had to do. But then college, they concentrated on the 100, 200, and 400. By my junior year, it was mainly the 400 because he brought in other girls to do the 
I did not mean to shortchange you. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I feel bad. <laughs> he was like, stop, wait on it. Uh, 60, <laughs> let me get you 60 yard to one, two. All right. So, what? So, but 400 became your best is what I, well, what I was building up to mm -hmm. because every other 400 runner that I know and that I have a relationship with feels like theirs is the most difficult of all of, of, of all of those that you just named. So I, that's why I wanted to ask. I didn't want to, I wanted to know if you felt that way too. And I'm, and I'm super glad because you got a chance to run everything. So yeah, yeah, how did you feel? I'm not gonna say it's the most difficult, but it's the more challenge. Because when you lead the 200 and you know you got another 200 to go, <laughs> that's the challenge. But by the time he brought in the better sprinters, I found my, best race would have been the 400 according to coach woods and coach moultrie i i i skipped over this a little bit because you talked about the scholarship offer mm -hmm. what made you pick howard yeah actually i didn't want to leave home so i'm from Tacoma park maryland and when the women's coach from howard came plus he was a friend of my coach from montgomery blair they went to Howard together. So it was hands down because I didn't want to leave the area. And it seems like it, it worked out well for you because I'm just going to, I'm going to read the, uh, a, a little snippet of the resume that you put together as a, as, as a, as a track person. So, mm -hmm. um, you broke school records at the pin relays. Oh yeah. <laughs> you, uh, most outstanding track voted most outstanding track runner. Yes. And you brought back all, all American status back to the uh, school itself of Howard University. That is correct. So first off, that is amazing. <laughs> let, me, let me just let me let me stop the question there. That full stop. That is amazing. But Thank then you. I also want to know what would be your highlight. Like if you had if you had one highlight from from all of your uh, your track career. Hmm. Does it have to be college? No. Okay. I would say it was the high school when we did the 60 yard dash and I became the all states in the 60 yard dash. Mm. Was that a surprise to you? Did you, I mean, cause you mentioned you did so many, um, you did so many events. Was that a surprise to you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just the best moment to actually say, Hey, you got this award yeah, and you're the state champion. Yeah. Cause Technically, when I went to college, I just wanted to run track and get that scholarship to get that degree. Mm -hmm. My parents could not afford college. So that was my full ride to get that bachelor's degree. So I'm saying to myself, if that's what it's going to take, high school is where I've got to initially show myself for the coaches to actually look at me. So, and you have you have two degrees from Howard, right? I have a master's, yes, in exercise physiology. Yes. Very I wasn't cool. a PhD, but you know what? <laughs> I got tired of school. And it's understandable. <laughs> I can completely understand that. I want to ask you, I mentioned some of your accomplishments. I neglect to mention that you were captain as well. So I I've been I don't know if you if you've caught it. I watched the uh, the last dance. It was the docuseries on Michael Jordan. Um oh. and uh it was just kind of just about, you know. You know him coming from Wilmington, North Carolina, to to you know best player in the world and all that kind of stuff. But he talked about how he drove his how he drove his teammates, and sometimes he could be a not nice person while while driving them. Like you know, he was not at always a very well liked guy in the locker room because he demanded the best out of everybody. So I wanted to know what kind of team, team captain were you? Were, were you more like because then they talked about Scottie Pippen? He was more like, hey, you can do it like more like motivational and stuff like that. So I just wanted to know what kind of what kind of team captain were you? I would be more like Scottie Pippen. Mm -hmm. I was more of a motivator because I'm a team player. Once again, there's no I in team. So once you found that this person might've been better in this race, you're just gonna motivate them to be better, push them to be better, which at the same time, you're gonna be doing better too. So as a captain, I had to look at the whole team and not just myself. I'm glad you brought up teamwork because mm -hmm. people think of track as just an individual sport. Yeah. And it's so much more than that, but particularly for a relay team. Mm -hmm. um, just talk about that interaction, because I've always that has always fascinated me. From you know, obviously the baton handoff is you know that that's 
point blank number one. Obviously, you drop that, the whole thing's over. But I just mean, like, y'all have to, there has to be something more than just technique there. Y'all, there has to be a chemistry there that has to extend off the track, right? Definitely. So you're right. We did. And Coach Mochi and Coach Wood instilled in us, you got to eat, sleep, and drink track. So even though we were doing it on the field and in practice, after practice, we hung together too. So we kind of stayed with each other to motivate each other. But yes, when you talk about the handoff, you got that exchange zone. So we had to constantly work on that. We had to make sure we kind of had that encouragement to encourage them because, you know, they're getting tired. Yeah. A lot of times I was the last leg. So we're looking at, yeah, you got this. So I'm just waiting for the baton. And just in case y'all didn't know, the last leg is the anchor, and that is where they put the fastest one. I don't know. I She won't go say it, so I'll say it. That is where they put the fastest one of them. They had the anchor. Go ahead. I'm sorry. By, by, by all means, continue. It depends on the coach now. Okay. And it depends on the situation. Because by the time in 1983, when we became All-Americans, we did have an issue in the final where one of our legs, one of the young ladies, had an issue with her hamstring. So coach had to mix it up. And I became the third leg. And she became the fourth leg so she could hold on to the lead that the first, second, and third had given. And all four of us did successful. Wow. So I'm surprised as a, so did you run track? How did you know the? I, I, I did run track. I was terrible. Like, let's, before we, before we, I don't even want to bring it up because I'm around royalty right now. I don't like bringing it up. That wasn't, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have wanted to see that. But I did, I ran hurdles. But like, I did enjoy learning a little bit more about that. You know, I enjoyed like the kind of the culture of track a little bit about like kind of just learning different things. You know, even, you know, the hammer throwing, everything, like everybody has their own thing that they're doing. Like track is very different from a lot of sports, I feel like, because everybody usually, Work out kind of practices together. You cer certainly have position groups, but everybody kind of practice together. Track, everybody's kind of in just completely different zones and stuff. And that was definitely a new experience. That is true because you have, like you said, your shot put going on the same time as the running going on. So you got to make sure the high jumpers are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So you're correct. Definitely. Yeah. That is, that's, that's really cool. How'd you um, feel like, from your time at Howard, what do you feel like you took from your time at Howard, particularly as a student athlete that you applied later on in life? I'm glad you said student athlete because the student part came first and the coach made sure that we were doing our academics because even with the MEAC, they had the uh, academic portion that they would give us an award for that. So if it wasn't a 3.0, we're looking at 3.2, 3.5, 3.7. You would see that every semester when it came to the track team because coach always instilled in us academics first. But it's difficult as a student athlete because running track, we were always on the road. Hmm. So we had to take our books with us. You find us studying at the in the hotels, maybe at the track meet because we had a test when we came back on Monday. So difficult, major accomplishment. Yeah, I, I've, I always, when the, all of my athlete friends, when I went to Howard, I was always just in awe because they'd be up before we were and were a lot of times had just, their day was structured. You know, they like you have a full structured day. I want to talk a, a little bit about your, um, about the important, like as, as a student athlete, as you were, kind of the importance that you saw about the, uh, about uh, giving money and, and, and supporting that leg, not only with money, but with your time of like just having that sort of feeling that the university and its alumni have your, your best interests at heart. Uh, back then, it was kind of difficult to actually, when you say the alumni, we were always traveling. So we, our head was always on what we need to do on that track field. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming definitely like um, I was telling you about the, the book, Ted Chambers, he was a great supporter. He would always be there supporting and cheering us on. We had the um, trainers uh, in the training room, which I always stayed hurt. 
Well, I knew about where the training room was because I had to go there after practice or after meet. So we did have a lot of support, which was very important to us because I know right now they're talking about more about the mental part of it. Yeah. Back then it was basically the same, but we didn't have as much help as we have now, which is good that they do have the help now. As always, I encourage uh, the listeners and watchers, bisonexpress.org slash giving. Uh, the more you get, the more we all, uh, the more you give, the more we all get. Uh, but talk to me a little bit more about, about that book, just just because uh, I, I wanted to, to ask you about that anyway. Uh, just a little bit about, uh, you said, the history of athletics and physical education at Howard University. And that's an alum, Ted Chambers, uh, yes. that wrote it. Tell, tell me just a little bit about the book. Yes, he was also a professor coach and an athlete back in oh let me see first black university oh boy i forgot when he was the athlete but at the same time he chose to write about everything when it comes to athletics and physical education because he was a physical education teacher which by the way i'm a retired fitness physical education teacher Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I made it through. And congratulations on retirement. I was about to say, congratulations. Yeah, I made it through. So you'll find the All-American. He talks about every last one of us mm. in the book. He actually autographed it for me. So if anybody get a chance, I would definitely recommend them read this as far as you'll see um, the ones that are going to be inducted in September, their name is in this book too. Nice, The History of Athletics and Physical Education at Howard University by mm -hmm. alum Ted Chambers. Uh, Deborah Murphy, thank you so much mm -hmm. for, for making time for Bison Break. Mm -hmm. As always, bisonexpress.org slash giving. Thank you for spending time with us. I'm so glad that I got a chance to know you and know a little bit more about your story. Uh, and I look forward to, uh, to, to the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you there and meeting you in person. That sounds fantastic. As always, guys, be blessed. Take it easy. Thank you.